this page is being served by the ESP and whatever you type there it's going to appear on that LCD and I press return now one two three and there it is let's talk about the parts on this project of course the biggest thing is I'm going to try to add an LCD display here so we can see what the output of the ESP without having to connect it to a PC anymore so that's the biggest thing this is the device that interface the ESP to the PC so we can talk to each other and send the sketches so what I plan on doing since there's only one serial I will switch between here when I'm programming it and then here when I'm using it after I'm done programming it so I'm going to put a switch and there's a switch right here I think you can see it right yeah this is a two pole switch so if it goes that way it will connect to this so the ESP will be connected to this so it outputs that way if it's connected to here the ESP will be connected to here so it could be programmed so that's that switch and this is just a two-line LCD display I found in my bin it has a built-in serial right here so basically it only has three pins two for power and one for the serial input I don't remember how much I got it I just found it in my bin okay, so that's that switch now this switch is just a power switch there is a power adapter here just a cell phone charger I use so it's 5 volts coming here through this jack and then from that jack it goes to the voltage regulator it converts the 5 volts to 3 volts all this switch does is to connect and disconnect that power from the regulator okay now this third switch controls whether the ESP should be listening for new code to be put onto it or it should be actually be running the code interestingly this switch is only looked at at power up that allows us to use that port for other things such as blinking the LED and stuff the rest of the wiring is pretty standard ESP wiring stuff that you can look up and I will also include it within the description of this video at YouTube let's look at some code now so I was about to show you guys that I have two Arduino IDEs now one for the newest Arduino at this time which is 164 right there and I have another one that I specifically keep for the Arduino IDE for ESP which is 161 instead of 164 the reason I have two of these is because it used to be the Arduino IDE for the ESP require a special build that knows about the ESP however that appears to have changed now if we go to github here says starting with 164 Arduino allows installation of third-party platform packages using boards manager so let's do that so I already have uh, 164 so I don't need to download it and then start the Arduino we did that and then go to preferences enter this URL to the additional board manager URL okay let me copy that go to the Arduino IDE preferences and there it is okay next open boards manager from tools board menu let me go side this so we could see both boards manager from tools board menu tools board menu uh, definitely not an Arduino U and I don't have one of those oh here it is boards manager boards manager and now we are looking for the ESP8266 ESP and there it is let's install it I guess installing okay it's installed so now we should be able to find a new here it is so there's a couple ESP modules supported mine is just a generic ESP one so I'm gonna choose that what else is there Wow, clock frequency. Let's see, flash size. I don't know. I'm just going to leave it in the in the default. Speed is fine. Com port is three. Okay, let's try to use it. Since we got a new install, I think we should try a blink first. Blink. Guess we don't need that one anymore. One of the things we have to remember when we're using the Arduino IDE for ESP on the ESP, of course is that this does not have as many GPIO pins as a regular Arduino so for instance there is no such thing as pin 13 so we have to actually change this to a pin that the ESP has I wired this LED to GPIO2 
so let's just change to 2 give it a try upload that yeah press ctrl u which is uh, the same as pressing this button over here it compiles and uploads at the same time after it's done compiling let's make this bigger whoa sync failed oh I didn't have it on <laughs> it would help to uh, turn it on so let it upload again just watch here it says uploading we have to turn it on at that time so now it's actually transmitting you could see the light blinking both on the FTDI coming from the PC and on the ESP so it'll just a, s a few more seconds here and when it says done up uploading here it should actually run the sketch and there it is so and then when you turn it off and turn it back on um, we need to remember about this switch here remember how I said that this controls where or not it's waiting for a program so if I turn it back on now it's not going to run the program. It's actually waiting for the Arduino IDE to send another sketch to here. So what you need to do is you need to turn it off, turn it back on, because it only looks at that during power up, remember? So make sure that it's high to indicate that we don't want to build, put a firmware, and then we we'll turn it on. And that should blink. All right, so we got blink running. So let's go look at some uh, Wi-Fi code. OK, let's get some. ESP samples. These are all ESP8266 samples as it's clearly marked. And the one we want is this Hello Server. This is the sketch that I started with when I was working on my LCD display. So let's see. Uh, it's really short. Look at how short this is. It's like two pages long. So you have a whole bunch of includes, the libraries that comes with the ESP and you're supposed to put in your SSID here this is the access, the name of your access point mine is firefly24 and I will put in my password later after <laughs> I press pause and then um, you basically define the server uh, we are going to turn the uh, ESP8266 into a server and you say instantiate me a server this is the class that comes from this library here from that yeah from the library so there's our server we're going to hit it on port 80 which is a standard browser HTTP port and oh that's interesting they still use 13 I'm going to change that to 2 and then uh, okay so these are just a whole bunch of functions the one that's actually that we want to see is the setup first we'll come back to the rest of that stuff up there so the setup just basically, yeah, like I said, a lot of these aren't, aren't really necessary. These are just uh, some sort of kind of like debugging. So you say when you when it first set up, you're going to turn the LED to zero, which in my case actually will turn it on. It will, it will turn the LED to, to on. And then we open up the serial port so we can do some debugging in the uh, serial window. And then we just say, hey, now go, let's t connect to the Wi-Fi access point and then that's just a blank line and we just sit here until we get connected so we sit until we as long as the status of that Wi-Fi module is not connected we keep on sitting here do -do 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 -do, twiddling, twiddling our times pressing dots and then actually maybe I should run this and then we'll explain it that's probably better Let's do that. So make sure we are in the mode to uh, receive a sketch by bringing the GPIO 0 to low and then we'll get ready to power it. So I'm going to go over here, do another upload. Yeah, in the meantime, I've uh, already entered my password, so don't forget to do that. Getting ready takes a little longer it's a bigger sketch okay we turn it on we're uploading it's exciting okay I'm going to get ready go open a browser oh we also need to uh, find out what the IP address is so I'm gonna go back over here and I'm going to open the serial window serial monitor we are at 1500 115 200 
and let's run this. Switch it to run mode and turn it back on. And there it is. We are connected to my access point and there is the IP address of the ESP. So let's go hit that IP address. Copy. Paste. Return. Hello from the ESP8266. Awesome. So let's see how the, the code does that. Okay, that was cool, wasn't it? <laughs> um, I'm going to run it one more time, and this time we will see these dots here while it's waiting to connect it, and then it will say connected, and then it will print my access point ID, that's Firefly24, and then it will print the IP address. And then we'll talk about this later. So let me do that. I'm going to recycle power and turn it back on and watch the serial window over here. So those dots are these dots over here and then the connected is right there and the IP address is right here and then I'm not sure what this is about. I'll have to come back and look at that. It wasn't there before. <laughs> and then, but this is really cool here. Basically now um, the web server is up and running. Now we have to tell it what does it have to do uh, when a request comes in from a browser. So this is just a root basically if they don't specify anything after the IP address or the domain name then it will actually make a call to this function. So for each type of things like if you type inline it's going to execute this piece of code. These are just two ways to do things. Either you could put a function name in here which will be up here somewhere. There's handle root right there. So when somebody did I wish it's not so far away. When somebody just put their root here without anything, I, I guess I could put a slash there. And if you just put a slash there, then it will call this function. And that function, as you see up here, all it does is it turns on the LED to 1, which I thought would turn it off. Oh, and it turns it back on here. So it'll actually just blink off and blink on because that's the way I wire this. Let me see that. I've never noticed this. Wow, it happened so fast probably that you couldn't even see it. And then here's the text. So if you change this, it will change that. And then more interestingly is you can have as many different directories or commands or whatever you want to call this and make it do different things. So this one says if you say inline, so let's go over there and say inline. And it says something else completely different, which is what this does. And if it's not found, it's going to make that function call. Okay, finally, let's look at the code that I modified. You can see that everything is pretty much the same. There's still the similar includes. This was written before I got this newer one, so they, they must have added a couple more includes. But my old code still works, apparently. And very similar, SSID, password. And here's something slightly different. Now, instead of spitting out hello ESP8266, I just basically built this really dumb HTML, um, you know, old style, no CSS, no Angular or jQuery or anything. It's just regular form. This is what we actually saw um, when, well, maybe we should run this too. Okay, let's do that. Okay, let's upload this guy. So make sure that he is uh, ready to receive data. Make sure that's still going there. And I'm going to wait for the download. I'm sorry, I'm going to wait for the upload and flip the switch. Here it goes. Okay, it's then uploading. But notice that nothing is happening on the LCD this time um, because it's still connected to the FTDI. Remember the switch? It connects either on, the, on this position to the left, it connects these two. And if I move it to the right, it's going to be connected here. By this time, the ESP already ran the setup that is needed to set up the LCD, but it already ran. So what we need to do is we need to turn it off. We need to switch it to the run mode, and then we'll turn it back on. So now, as you can see, the LCD is being initialized. And then that's the dot 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 we saw earlier. And I changed the formatting such that it will fit in this smaller space. Remember, it was a lot more lines on serial monitor. 
and so all basically all I did is oh yeah let's go look at this too so that should be on the browser let's open a browser and the IP address is still the same 107 and this time when I press return without anything in there we got a different piece of uh, page altogether and this as you would recognize there's the paragraph up there and everything is centered and there's a talk to me and that's not even CSS so <laughs> and here's the image and I actually do not have the image served by the ESP I took his image and uploaded it to Imager and then Imager gave me a URL and there it is so I just put the URL at Imager here and then there's this is the form and there's the WhatsApp over here that's over here and uh, input text there's the submit button and when it's done basically it sends this to the browser we type something here let's say something else other than hello world let's type hello youtube I guess <laughs> look at that let's see what else is different about this code compared to the original hello server same thing with the server same handling message and now however however instead of simply returning something like this well that's a handle root where's the other one that says this works okay so this one says if you get this you say uh, this works I actually take in whatever the message that comes in and I reply to the browser with the form again so uh, that way it starts over basically after we send that back to the browser we process what is being sent the message is coming in from the server I have to do a little bit of processing here because the form is I believe HTML encoded so spaces becomes pluses there are probably other characters but this is enough for the demonstration so and then I clear the LCD this code to clear the LCD is very specific to this to my LCD but all they are basically is you send a couple care a couple special character and in these characters mean something to the display like to send an FE 52 is to set the contrast and 40 is the parameter 40 is very high contrast brightness 8 is the maximum I believe and then clear as LCD right here is just another set of different it's like that's 53 this is 51 51 means clear screen and let's see what else is different oh I changed the speed of the serial it used to be 115 200 I changed it to 9600 because that's exactly the speed of my LCD display but the rest of it should be very similar somewhere in here there should be the same yeah L connected and there's the same dot and however instead of doing the serial print like this I have my own print line 1 which will print on the first line and I have a, a print line 2 which will print on the second line of course and for those of you interested uh, I will make this code available for download so you can study it closer but that's the gist of it your imagination is the limit I mean this could be as complicated as you want it could have JavaScript in it and jQuery or whatever because like I do not have this hosted here the image you don't have to host the script and the jQuery on the ESP itself either I mean that could be hosted on some CTN at Google or something leave me a comment if you got any questions otherwise I'll talk to you guys on my next video thank you for watching talk to you later bye bye mm -hmm.